in order to understand that, I can say that uh, you have, you want to embed this G, for example, you have some graph and uh, you want to cut it like this. And there are different ways to go from uh, from I to J. So this is graph G. Uh, this is uh, flow one goes here, F2, F3. And you know, flow is the sum of these flows. And uh, so the, the cut is like this. This is the cut. So this is uh, S bar area, this is S area. And we want to find an embeddings, embeddings, uh, a different graph. For example, G prime. Here we have G prime. Uh, so G prime is like this. Again, we have some cut here, but cut from going from I to J, which has a dij weight, this is because it is a weighted graph. This dij, so ij, ij. Here we have just one edge, but this edge is dual to the flow, f1, f2, f3, that coming from i to j. So you see g prime is the sparsification of g somehow. Ah. Uh -huh. The note is, uh, the point I want to make is that alpha of G is greater than alpha of G prime. Why? Because just write the definition of that. Alpha of G is minimum of all edges from going from S to S bar, S, S bar. And I want to show it is greater than minimum of your demand here, S, S bar. How can I say that? Okay, so for the uh, optimization problem, you just force something to be less than one. And also F of P is your demand DIJ. And uh, so demands are, are fractional now and this f of p my this one this promotes the flows to be fractional and uh, i think I, I told you most of the things i wanted to mention but this is very beautiful here is beautiful because uh, d is forced to be less than one and for any one, you have something here. So this becomes, the denominator becomes greater. But uh, the denominator, S and S bar here are the same. Why? Because G and G prime use same vertices. So we didn't touch the vertices. We just touched the edges. The edges are just different. For any vertices I and J, we have vertices I and J. Okay, but the, but even for these points, we have some points here. But the way these edges are connected are different. And we have less edges in, in G prime than in G, as you, as you can imagine. So the, uh, uh, I want to talk about uh, the, the article of uh, Lighton and Rao, uh, Satish Rao, in 1999. Uh, the article is multi-commodity max flow mean cut theorems and their use in designing approximation algorithm. If you read that article, there is a theorem that says if G is any end node graph, with alpha of G is alpha, then it is possible to embed a multi-commodity flow in it 
with h f i j is equal to alpha over n log n and this is quite interesting so you are relating some multi commodity flow uh, and uh, you see how it is related to the cut so cut multi commodity flow cut multi commodity flow so it's a great dual representation that you can take advantage in saying some some results such as saying alpha of g is greater than alpha of g prime as i explained in the previous slide so this is a sparsifier, this is the original. So you see, you can use such things in your future article. So the definition of beta expander is that for any C, a deregular weighted graph omega ij is a beta expander if if every set of node S, Wij, which is W of S and then S bar, this is, is at least beta ds. And its conductance is at least beta. Uh, expander flow is just this, expander flow. It's a multi-commodity flow that is beta expander for, for some constant, beta. And the, the, the lemma 23 is interesting. If a graph G contains a multi-commodity flow, Fij, that is deregular and beta expander, let me write this, this is important. Lemma 23. If a graph G contains a multi commodity flow Fij that is deregular. and a beta expander when alpha of g is greater than beta d. Proof. It says that for any s, it's a subset of vertices, the amount of flow, the amount of flow leaving s is at least beta d and so this is a lower bound on the number of edges leaving s so if you have s of uh, in h we have s and s bar s complement and uh, in in h any edge i j uh, so this is uh, for H and for G is something like this. So going from I to J, for example, it takes three because it is uh, three regular and uh, it takes, for example, three edges. And from here to something else, for example, three edges. And uh, so let's just count 
because uh, the minimum of number of edges between S and S bar, the conductance is just this. This is the conductance. But uh, we know that it is the irregular, so any uh, so then you're going to calculate number of edges in S. Because S is the irregular, it means that each vertex has D, so this becomes D times the cardinality of S. Because each, each vertex I, for example, here is S and S bar, each vertex I has three edges that crosses. So it becomes D times the number of these edges like I. And so this is DS, and, uh, and this is the conductance is beta, and what else? So the number of edges leaving uh, this S becomes, so by definition, it is S and then S bar. So it is greater than, this is beta. So, so, so the, so the numerator, uh, so the denominator is uh, greater than equal to beta d s. And this is your weights. And then, uh, ex and then the number of edges uh, over s becomes beta here. D. Uh huh. And this is alpha. This is alpha. Uh, and the final theorem, final lemma of this lecture, lemma twenty seven. There is a positive constant beta where there is a polynomial time algorithm I'm talking for three hours that computes a deregular flow in a graph G is equal V for all S V and S is greater than CN and FIJ is greater than beta DS so this one or or finds a cut of expansion D log n so these are the lectures that i gave in my weekend today is sunday and have a good weekend